Now that we have Oracle VirtualBox set up, we can go ahead and create a Linux image. And the Linux distribution I'm going to use is Ubuntu. That is my personal favorite. Now you may have another distribution such as Red Hat or something like that that you want to use and that is fine. It's pretty much the same process for creating an image on VirtualBox. So if you want to go ahead and use another ISO that is fine, but in this video we're going to go ahead and use Ubuntu. So the first thing you need to do is download the Ubuntu ISO. And as usual, I will give you the link to this download. So you're going to go ahead and hit Ubuntu Desktop, and then you're going to come to another page called the Download Ubuntu Desktop. And we want this LTS version right here. So you're going to go ahead and hit Download, but you're not done yet. Then you have to come down here and hit this Not Now Take Me to the Download. Now, if you want to go ahead and donate to PayPal, feel free, but I'm just going to go ahead and hit Not Now Take Me to the Download. Now, this is a large file. It's about 1.5 gig, so this may take some time depending on the speed of your connection. So go ahead and hit the pause button, and when you have it down, go ahead and restart the video. Okay, so I'm going to assume that you have the file down. Now what I've done is I've created a folder on my C drive called Linux, and then I created a folder called Desktop for the ISO. And there you can see we have it right there. So now we can go ahead and create our image on VirtualBox. So the first thing we're gonna do is go ahead and hit New, and then you're gonna go ahead and name the image. And I'm just gonna go ahead and call this Linux Ubuntu. Real simple. And look, it already picked the version that we want, Ubuntu 64-bit. Now you can see all these different versions out here. Again, if you wanted to use Red Hat, you could, or some of the other different flavors. But we're gonna go ahead and use Ubuntu 64-bit. Then you're gonna go ahead and hit Next. Now here's where you pick the memory size. I'm gonna go ahead and use four gig, but you can pick whatever size you wanna use here, depending on how much RAM you have on your machine. So we're gonna go ahead and hit next. And now what we're gonna do is create the virtual hard disk. So we'll go ahead and hit create. And the default is VDI, that's what we want, the virtual box disk image, so we'll hit next to that. And then we want the dynamically allocated amount. And I'm gonna go ahead and just take their default, which is 10 gig, and there, we have our image created. But we're not done yet, so we need to go ahead now and start the image, which you can do right here. Now, you're gonna get this message where it's looking for the startup disk, and of course, we just downloaded that. So you're gonna go ahead and navigate to that. And in this case, I created that folder called Linux. And here is the ISO. So let's go ahead and open that up. And I'm just going to hit start. Now up here you can hit don't show these messages again. That's usually what I do. And they'll keep popping them up. So I just say don't show them again. Now it may take some time to set up the software. So let's go ahead and actually expand this out. But before we do that, so you can see now that this is a virtual image, right? My host is actually this Windows image right here. So this is a virtual image that we have of Linux now that is running on VirtualBox. And let's go ahead and actually expand this out. And you can see how VirtualBox actually sizes this appropriately. Very nice. Now you're going to get prompted to configure Ubuntu. And what we're going to do is go ahead and install Ubuntu. So we're going to hit that. And we're just going to hit continue here. But if you want to go ahead and select this download updates while installing Ubuntu, you can certainly do that. I'm just going to hit continue here. And you do want to erase the disk and install Ubuntu. Do not worry. This is not going to affect your host. We're just affecting the Linux image that we've created. And that's the nice thing about virtual images. You only affect the virtual image, not the host itself. And that's why a lot of people are increasingly using virtual images. So we'll just hit install now. And we're going to hit continue again. And then it's going to ask, where are you? And I'm just going to say New York, even though I'm in Michigan. But I'll just say New York. And then you pick the language. In my case, it is English. Now you need to put in your name. Now here you can create the name of your Linux image. I'm just gonna go ahead and stick with that. I'm gonna stick with the username of Ernie and I'm just gonna keep the password the same as my name, Ernie. And I can give that out because I don't think anybody's gonna to wanna to hack into this. And I'm actually gonna go ahead and select the login automatically since this is just a test machine. And then the installation will continue. And again, depending on how fast your machine is, this may take some time. Now, if you're really bored, you can go ahead and watch all of these nice features that Ubuntu provides. Okay, there you can see the installation is complete. So let's go ahead and restart now. 
Okay, so we have our Ubuntu desktop loaded up here, so let's go ahead and see if we can log in. And everything looks great. So let's just go ahead and make sure the image is working okay. If you want to remove things from the launcher, you can just right click on it and hit unlock from launcher and then it's gone. And let's make sure the terminal is working. So you go up here and here's where you can do a search and you just type in terminal, start to type it in and then just pick the terminal. And there you can see it's working just fine. And this is what we're going to be using in the Linux tutorial for beginners series. So you're going to get quite accustomed to using this. All right, so let's go ahead and power off our image now. So you just go up here and close out the image. You'll be prompted to either save the machine state, send the shutdown signal, or power off the machine. I always power off the machine. And there you can see it takes us back to our VirtualBox Manager. So you can see how powerful this VirtualBox Manager is. Okay, thanks for watching this tutorial.